right, good evening everyone. We appreciate you braving the cold to get out tonight. It is gonna be well worth it because you're gonna learn lots of things that you've never heard before. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about um, frequency patterns, electromagnetic radiation, things that are coming off our electric electrical devices and things like our computers that have, have other types of aberrant energy. I'm Dr. Sally Brown. My daughter, Dr. Tara Farr, will be speaking tonight. We are from Brown Family Chiropractic. And also speaking tonight will be Dr. Rudy Byron from Byron Health and Wellness. So sit back, listen. We appreciate your attention, and you're going to learn lots. So absorb what you hear. Hello again. Welcome, everyone, especially all of us who are braving the cold. It's a little chilly willy out there, so hopefully this discussion tonight will warm up, warm us up. And in fact, uh, I mean that intentionally because it is about warming. And uh, the discussion tonight is, is all about electromagnetic frequencies or electromagnetic fields. And the, the, the acronym that's used commonly for that is called EMF. So we will often refer to that acronym EMF, which again is referring to electromagnetic fields. And speaking of EMFs, how many people in the audience have, have a, some familiarity with this discussion, EMFs? Good, so about three quarters to almost 80 or 85 percent of the audience rose their hand. And that's very good. Uh, this is, this is a, a very hot topic these days, and it's something that we should absolutely be aware of. And, and strongly consider mitigating, that is doing something about it. And why is it that we should do something about EMFs? Well, before we, we get to that part of, this, part of the discussion, and all of us will, ha will share some uh, anecdotal information about that, before we get to the, the quote-unquote action, action plan piece, uh, let, let's define what is an electromagnetic field. What is an EMF? So EMF, specifically electromagnetic field or electromagnetic frequency, that will often refer to that also as non-native EMF, which means non-natural. So obviously there must be some form of a natural EMF, and natural electromagnetic fields are in fact produced by the Earth, but at a very small, low level. And speaking of EMFs, let, let's kind of conceptualize that so that we all know what the heck we're talking about. So EMFs have to do with electromagnetic field or frequency. So electricity, magnetism, and field, right? So when we think of EMFs, think of some force, quote unquote, force field that is causing an action. It, it, it causes some response uh, to something that, that, it, that it touches or it affects. EMFs specifically, have to do with the spectrum of, of light. So when we look at the visible light spectrum, right, we, we think of a rainbow. We all look through our eyes and we, we see things. We can feel things, touch things, and see things. And we're, when we do that through our eyes, we're talking about the visible light spectrum. Everyone understand that? Well, beyond the visible light spectrum are areas of light that we visit, physically cannot see. And so on one end of the spectrum, so if we're in the visible light spectrum here in the center, this is where humans see. We're just seeing this small little bit as part of this huge universe, correct? There, there are areas of light, or EMF, electromagnetic radiation, that we can't see, such as something you may have heard of gamma rays or X-rays, right? When we, go, when we get an X-ray from... Uh, radiology department in a clinic, we're actually dealing with a form of EMF, so electromagnetic frequency. So we're dealing with gamma rays, X-rays, and then we have the small visible light spectrum that we live in. That's what we see every day. And then we have it within the visible light spectrum, we have something called, think of the rainbow. That's the range of colors that we can see within that rainbow. Right, and there, there are approximately how many, seven or eight colors within a rainbow, starting off with violet, so ultraviolet, within that visible range, ultraviolet, 
going down to yellow, blue, et cetera, all the way down to infrared. So we have the visible spectrum that we see here. And then beyond that visible spectrum, we get into an area called microwaves, okay? Microwaves, everyone understand that? So we have this huge spectrum of light, but we're only seeing a very small amount of it. Yet we have this huge spectrum that exists in the universe. Does everyone understand that? And each of, each of these areas can have an impact on the body. Gamma rays can have an impact on the body. If we have too much exposure to gamma rays, what can happen? Can cause what? Cancer, Cancer right? Because it abnormally affects our bodily functions. What about x-rays? Too much exposure to x-rays can cause what? Cancer, correct. And then we have the visible light spectrum. Typically, visible light spectrum is not going to have a significant impact on us, but too much exposure to ultraviolet can, in fact, cause a problem. Too much, we call it UV rays, right? So many people, unfortunately, wear sunscreen, among other things. We can talk about that another day. But the UV light can have an adverse effect if we have too much. And then we go to the other part of the spectrum outside of the visible spectrum. We can't see it, but it has a physical effect on the body called microwave, okay? Everybody in here should be familiar with microwave energy because 90% of American households have, have a microwave in their homes, correct? So again, this is all part of the electromagnetic field radiation spectrum. Radiation, think heat, okay? Think energy, got it? But we are only seeing a small part of it, but we're surrounded by these other forms of electromagnetic frequency, got it? Some of which is even produced by the Earth in very small amounts, so it doesn't have a significant biological impact. So everyone understand that part so far. Okay, because it's essential to understand the basics of this before we get into the details. So with the basics being set, we're talking about a discussion today about EMFs, non-native EMFs specifically, and those are the kind of EMFs that are artificially produced. Artificially produced, meaning man is producing this form of electromagnetic field. And EMF specifically, when, when we produce these electromagnetic fields, they have an absolute biological effect on the body. And let, let's begin to talk about what forms of EMFs first before we talk about biological effects. What forms uh, exist? What, why have this discussion? How do we get exposed to these non-native electromagnetic fields? So. <clears throat> Non-native electromagnetic magne magnetic fields. How? What? What sort of devices would emit EMFs? Phones. Cell phones. Very good. Cell phones. Mike, thank you. Microwaves. Cell phones. Microwaves. Let's talk about those two in particular, and there are many others, by the way. Many others. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Correct. Exactly. Wi-Fi. What else? Baby monitors. Baby monitors. What else? Cell phone towers, right? MRI machines. MRI, machines. MRI machines. Wireless mouses. Wireless printers, etc. So again, we're surrounded by these. So the point of this discussion is not to create fear, right? These these devices aren't going anywhere. The point of this discussion is to allow us to be aware of the scenario and take action steps to protect ourselves. It's really as simple as that. And to promote the makers of these devices to change the frequency in ways that these, these EMFs, these non-native EMFs can be uh, formed in a way that they're actually beneficial for us. Because there are forms of EMF that are very beneficial for us. Little side note, there's something called pulsed electromagnetic frequency therapy, which is highly beneficial. So if you, if you Google P-E-M-F-T, that's pulse electromagnetic frequency therapy, you'll see uh, 
uh, significant uh, health benefits from that. That's another story, another subject, another day. So with these devices, with these devices, let's talk about the frequency, the actual level of energy that's produced from these devices. <coughs> We've, we've seen on these wireless devices, let's say cell phones and or let's say wireless phones, uh, they, you'll, you'll see on the, uh, on the boxes for them, it'll say 2.4 gigahertz, right? If you, have you guys ever seen that? 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz is the amount of, the amount of times the, the amount of times that the waves, uh, hit an object, and I, I guess to, to say this in plain English, microwaves and Wi-Fi function <coughs> at the same frequency. It's exactly the same. For microwaves, it's 2.3. For cell phones and wireless phones, et cetera, it's 2.4. So whenever we talk about cell phone issues, we can also equally say we're dealing with microwave issues, okay? So talking about uh, cell phones, <laughs> microwaves, et cetera, how do these affect the body? How do, the, how do electromagnetic frequencies affect the body? What is the issue? Why are we concerned about it? Because they can cause significant biological damage. And how does that occur? First of all, we know that it occurs because, prime example, before cell phones were developed, microwave technology, microwaves were produced actually around World War II, and they, they were used as a form of radar. So they, they, someone, some smart person said, hey, we can use this technology to heat food. So they, they began to do that and develop microwaves after, or at, right after World War II, and the Russians decided to do a ton of research on this. And Russians did the research and said, oh my gosh, this, this technology is extremely dangerous biologically. It can cause major problems all kind of degenerative diseases, among other things, cancer included, and the Russians said, enough of this, we're gonna ban microwaves. So they officially banned microwaves in their country in 1976. And so how many people knew that? Right, one person, one person raised, raised, raised her hand. Microwaves were banned in an entire country for many years until the country began to open up to Western ideas, et cetera. I forgot what it was called, perestroika or something like that. Uh, so it, it be, when, it, when it became more of a democratic society, then they decided to uh, lift the ban. And I don't know when they lifted the ban, but the ban has been lifted from my understanding. But the bottom line is, I wanna point out to you that an entire country decided they weren't gonna have microwaves in their society for a very important reason. I learned this about 12 years ago. And I have not had a microwave in my house for 12 years. Do not use it. And, and they're, they're, I'm super happy about that. Instead, we, we do things to, to prevent having to use a microwave because most of us are very dependent on the microwaves. You come to my office, you will not see a microwave in my office. In our kitchen, we have a convection oven. So, and, and it works just as fine. So not quite as, as quickly, but that's okay. You can adjust your life and your lifestyle. Uh, around that. So let's get back to the biological effects of either microwave technology and or cell phones, which are essentially, once again, one and the same. Everyone understand that? Okay, so biological effects of electromagnetic frequencies. What happens? So these, these in the past, when we, when we used these signals, we used analog signals. Everyone remember analog, right? Mm -hmm. We use analog signals. Analog signals are basically constant waves. It's constant, it's always ever present. It's like applying a force to something and just keeping that force steady. So if we use an example of concrete, if we have concrete here and we decide to uh, apply a force to that concrete, let's just put a steel girder and apply it to the concrete and just let that steel girder sit there on the concrete. That's, an, that's a direct force, but it's steady and constant, okay? What the, the difference between that analog force and a digital cell phone or microwave field is that it's a pulsed 
field, which means now what we're doing is we're going to use a jackhammer and and now the concrete breaks. Whereas before the concrete didn't break when we had a constant force. Understood? But now we add a jackhammer and it's shaking up the floor, boom, now the floor, floor bursts, floor breaks. Okay? That's exactly what happens to our cells when we are around this technology. The exact same thing occurs. So what, what else happens? How, how, so, so what, Dr. Byron? Well, what else happens? How does that work, really? The way it works is that the problem occurs because calcium, which is located inside the cells, so each of our cells has calcium in it among other nutrients, among other ions. And calcium is helping to keep that cell nice and strong on the inside. And there's only so much calcium in there. But once we start breaking up the cell, now calcium rushes in to that cell and causes massive problems, causes massive problems, re re massive havoc occurs. And then we get something called free radical production. Everybody, we've talked about free radicals before. Everybody familiar with that term, right? Free radicals are free radicals are tissue causing tissue damaging causing uh, substances. So free radicals are produced. Specifically, the free radicals that are produced are nitric oxide. We call that N, letter NO. So NO plus SO, which is superoxide. And NO and SO get in the cells jack up everything, and they produce another very toxic substance, substance called peroxynitrate. And peroxynitrate is, quite frankly, extremely dangerous, can cause cancer, among other things. So the body has to now use up its antioxidants to try to neutralize and buffer those oxidants that are now inside the cell. And remember, if we use the word oxidant, we're also just, you can replace that word with rust. Okay, we want to prevent rusting inside the cell, prevent accelerated cell death and or damage within the cell. So we need an anti-rust or rust-oleum type product such as antioxidants to come in and buffer and neutralize the toxins that were just produced because of the cellular damage from the Wi-Fi and or use of a microwave. And what happens when the cell gets damaged like that is a cell no longer functions properly and it doesn't communicate well with other cells. That's why the calcium influx is a huge, gigantic problem because calcium acts as a cellular communicator. It, it's it's what assists with sending out signals to other cells, says, hey, we're cool, everything's all good. And now cell-to-cell cell -cell communication is massively disrupted. And subsequently, Inside the cell, what happens as well is that the cells produce proteins, right? In our, inside of our cell, it's like a big city. And there's all kind of businesses that are at work to make sure that we're healthy, right? And one of the businesses produces proteins, right? And those proteins cannot be produced properly because the cell has been damaged. So now when we get cellular damage, we get DNA damage, that ultimately leads to chronic disease and or cancer. Everyone understand that? So the Wi-Fi deal, this EMF issue is very, very, very real. There are hundreds of thousands of people who are very sensitive to EMFs. Um, typically, believe it or not, it tends to be more women. Women tend to be more sensitive than men. It's about, of the 20% of the population that's sensitive, 80% of the 20% happen to be women which is interesting. Uh, so there, there's some other, other, some other biological pieces that, that go along with this. So ultimately what I want to say is a couple things. Um, EMF, EMFs are a toxin. We, they, our body functions the same way or responds the same way to EMFs as it does any other toxin that, we, that we've discussed in the past. So that's very important to understand. That means we must do something to protect ourselves. Really, it's really that simple. Um, U.S. government did a study, said that cell phone tower transmission can damage the frontal lobe of the brain. Didn't, I mean, you know, that, that's easy. So we're talking about frontal lobe of the brain, we're talking about uh, planning, uh, you know, high, higher functions, 
ADHD, for example, all frontal lobe type issues. Depression, anxiety. Tumors in the brain is a big one. Frontal lobe is very sensitive. I think most of us should already be familiar with that. Uh, you absolutely do not want to put uh, a cell phone, for example, up against your head. I get very, very, very upset when I see my family and or friends with a cell phone right up against their head. And if they're listening right now, they know I'm telling the truth. Um, I, I physically, viscerally get upset because I know the damage that can occur from that. So I absolutely do not recommend that you have a cell phone and put it up to your face unless it's an absolute emergency, only for emergency reasons. Here's why. One foot away, having a cell phone, for example, one foot away from your head decreases damage by 80%, or one foot away from your body, could be anywhere. One foot away decreases damage by 80%. Four feet away, you get a 98% decrease. 98% decrease. <clears throat> so what does that mean? So the ideal thing to do is to walk around with a selfie selfie stick, right? Because ultimately, it's not smart even to carry it in your hand unless you're doing something to try to protect yourself, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So again, you, you do not, absolutely do not want to have cell phones up against your, your bodies. Uh, very, very dangerous. Again, most of the damage occurs within the one foot range. So would you put uh, an item of food in a microwave and stand there and wait for it to finish? No, because you're getting some microwave radiation standing right in front of it. So you, if, if, if you decide to be a brave soul and use a microwave at home, stay away from it, right? If you're cooking food in that microwave or heating it up, stay away. And by the way, how does a microwave work? How, how does it actually heat the food? Microwaves, remember the function of a microwave, the way it functions is exactly the same as a cell phone, exactly. So how does it work? So it works by heating, microwaves works by heating the water. That's what it does, it oscillates the water, gets the water heated up. And that's what ultimately leads to the heat development in the food. And what happens if you eat microwave food, right? You notice this right away, is that there's uneven, it's uneven heating, right? You might get one, one piece of the food that's really hot, another piece that's cold, because the water is not evenly distributed in that piece of food. So uh, oscillates the water. Well, guess what our body is? 70% what? Water, right? So in addition, one other thing, this is, a, this is another um, little cool factoid regarding microwaves. So what happens if you put metal in a microwave? It, ex it catches fire, right? You get a fire, right? Our, do our bodies contain metals? Absolutely. Minerals, metals, iron, copper, among others, right? So again, you put a cell phone up to your body, wherever it is, you have the potential to cause a fire in the body. That's called something that Dr. Sally likes to talk about all the time, which is inflammation, right? So again, this is very, very important to ensure that we are at least aware of these issues. You do not want to ignore these issues because in 10 years, you're going to say, oh my gosh, now they're telling us, right? Same thing with smoking. This is the smoking in the 1950s. And, you know, 20 years down the road, they're going to say, oh my gosh, we, we failed to tell you guys this. Well, you are a crowd that knows. So a couple of other things, and then I'll relinquish the hot seat here. <clears throat> Wi-Fi, <clears throat> all of the Wi-Fi and exposure is the equivalent of having about a thousand bees in a room. It increases the likelihood of getting stung. So it doesn't mean if you're in a room with Wi-Fi that you know, a problem's going to occur, but it certainly increases the likelihood. So naturally, and, and Dr. Terrell will probably talk about this and or Dr. Sally, naturally you wanna minimize your Wi-Fi exposure among other things. And we'll talk more about action steps in a few moments. I want to make sure I don't forget anything else here in my notes. Children, children, uh, why are children more susceptible and more sensitive to EMFs? 
Children are more susceptible to EMFs in large part because they have smaller bodies and thinner skulls. So I cannot tell you how many times parents bring their kids into the office using the iPad and the cell phone to keep them calm, right? And I get that, I totally get it. A lot of my patient population, these kids have autism among other neurobehavioral disorders, so I get it. The issue is that the kid will be just like this, right? On right here and or right here, okay? And so we're, we're doing this because we feel like it's necessary to keep our kids calm, but what did I say it affects, right? Frontal lobe, among other things, so it can make ADHD and other problems worse very easily. Frontal lobe is super duper sensitive. Kids have thinner skulls, smaller bodies, etc. <clears throat> I'm going to save some of the action steps for after, uh, after Dr. Tara and Dr. Sally chat. So I think I will relinquish the floor at the moment. Um, so Dr. Tara or Dr. Sally. Okay. You can always jump back in. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> All right, so I'm Dr. Tara Farr with Brown Family Chiropractic. I'm just going to take off kind of where Dr. Byron left off. He touched a few of the points I'm going to talk about today, but it's good to repeat this and hear it a few times so it sinks in. So he talked about um, electric fields and magnetic fields, right? And then wireless communications are electromagnetic fields. Um, an interesting fact is the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, has labeled magnetic fields a class three carcinogen. And that is what we are surrounded by constantly. We are literally swimming in an invisible ocean of EMF just about everywhere we go, right? Starbucks, the library, McDonald's, even cars have Wi-Fi now, all right? So it's all around us constantly. And it's nearly impossible to avoid the exposure completely, but there are definitely some things that we can do to reduce our risk and be aware of it and prevent um, ourselves from being exposed constantly. So Dr. Byron touched a little bit about the cellular level, about what happens um, when EMF is exposed to us at a cellular level. Um, Martin Paul, PhD, has identified and published several papers, over 26, describing how EMFs from cell phones and wireless technologies damage, damage plants, humans, and animals. So it is very present in our lives. Many of these studies have shown that when you are exposed to EMF, that intracellular calcium increases. So if you guys can go back to biology class, when you had that big cellular membrane and all those proteins that kind of sit inside and have different functions of what letting things in the cells, letting things out of cells, and it's that barrier between the outside cellular world and the inside cellular world. Well, there are these calcium channel blockers that prevent calcium from just rushing into our cells. And as Dr. Byron said, calcium is a big um, component of communication of cells. So our cellular membranes are seven million times more sensitive to EMFs than anything outside the cell or inside our cells, okay? So that membrane, again, is seven million times more sensitive to electromagnetic fields and frequencies. Every safety standard, or most of them at least, do not look at that cellular membrane when they're, they're um, setting their safety standards for EMFs. They look outside the cell, okay? So basically, all of the safety standards for EMFs are 7 million times off, all right? So once these calcium channels are open and this calcium influx rushes into our cells, um, what happens? Um, it has, that, that, as Dr. Byron said, has a major effect on free radicals and um, stress on the cells. So interesting enough, um, Calcium channel blockers, if you're on that medication, actually reduces your effects of EMF because it blocks that calcium influx. Another natural thing that helps block this influx of calcium is magnesium. Magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker. So optimizing your magnesium levels really help reduce the harmful effects of ele electromagnetic fields. So what, again, what happens when there's too much of this calcium in our cells? Dr. Byron had mentioned nitric oxide and a superoxide. Um, these are a, a result of high oxidative stress on the body. Oxidative stress, as he mentioned, is 
um, damage to our cells, okay? Oxidative stress is an imbalance of free radicals or toxins in the body, and um, we need to make sure our body is able to detoxify them. So oxidative stress, we want antioxidants, right? We know a lot of foods that have high antioxidants that we always say, antioxidants, eat your blueberries, they're high in antioxidants, right? But we need to make sure that our, our bodies are dealing with this large influx of these free radical oxides in our body. So free radicals are released in, in these cells and cause damage to the cells and basically they increase the aging process of your cells. So your age, cells are aging faster than they should be. What happens when we age too quickly? Things die faster, right? Or they get sicker or there's other issues with that. Um, so the radiation again, activates these calcium channel blockers, causes that large calcium into the cells, and it triggers a massive chain reaction. So what damage happens with this? Mitochondrial damage. Do you guys know what mitochondria is? Mitochondria is a powerhouse of every single cell. It's what produces energy. Um, it takes nutrients into the cell, breaks it down, and converts it to energy for us to use. If your mitochondria are dead, you are dead. You have no life if your mitochondria are dead. So all of these free radicals causes dysfunction in our energy house production of every single cell. So avoiding this EMF exposure is important to optimizing mitochondrial health and optimizing your overall health. Um, so again, free radicals, oxides, decimate your cell membranes and their proteins and it basically accelerates the aging process. Our cells are getting worn out, stressed out, quicker and quicker with less ability to detoxify and recover from that. When we're bombarding, I always use the analogy, if I have a cup, here, grab me my, my water. So I drank half of this. This is half full. This is my body's ability to detoxify. I have another bottle of water here that's full. And if I try to pour it into my detoxifying ability, what's gonna happen? Overflow. It's gonna overflow, it's gonna spill on the floor, get my shoes wet. So that's what our body, that happens in our body when we put too much toxic load on it and it can't recover and it can't keep up with the, the detoxification process. So we wanna make sure our organs that detoxify are optimally functioning to deal with a lot of this um, toxic exposure. So what are some common EMF related health problems? Does anyone know which tissues in the body have the highest concentration of calcium channel Blockers, heart, the pacemaker of the body, the heart. Calcium channel receptors. Receptors, sorry, did I say blockers? The brain, your nervous system, and male testes, surprisingly enough. Where do men carry their cell phones? Front pocket, right here. So studies dating back to the 1950s actually show that your nervous system is the most sensitive organ to electromagnetic fields. Some of these studies show up massive changes in the structure of neurons, including cell death and synaptic dysfunction, which means communication issues. So um, communication is what helps regulate, calcium is what helps regulate the communication between cells. So if there's dysfunction in that calcium flow, we're not communicating properly within our bodies. Um, so when this dysfunction in the communication presents, chronic issues can be a result of that. So issues with the brain. We said calcium channel receptors are high in the brain, right? What happens when the brain is overloaded with, with these calcium receptors? Anxiety, Dr. Byron mentioned a few of them. Depression, autism, Alzheimer's, you know, those are all effects. Common heart problems linked to EMF include cardiac arrhythmias, again, our pacemakers of the heart can't function properly, atrial fibrillation, premature atrial contractions, and abnormal heartbeats. So many of the people who suffer from these issues are on very dangerous drugs. And if you have any heart or brain-related condition, conditions, you want to take EMF very seriously and start taking steps to protect and remedy it. So if you know anybody that has any of those specific issues, you want to let them be aware of what EMF can do to them. So there's no question about it. EMF exposure triggers these conditions and many more. They may not be the sole contributor to a lot of these issues, but, they're de but they must not be overlooked and we have to take them seriously when we're looking at health. Um, 
So common reproductive effects, EMF may increase man's risk of infertility. We are seeing infertility on the rise in this country. If he carries a cell phone in his pants pocket near his groin, studies have linked low level elect electromagnetic radiation exposure to an 8% reduction in sperm motility and 9% reduction in sperm viability. We're frying our DNA for our children, literally. So Wi-Fi equipped laptops have also been linked to increasing sperm DNA fragmentation just after four hours of use. Four hours. And where do we sit with our laptops? On our laps. So we're going to talk about that a bit. Um, women have a risk of breast cancer if they keep their cell phones tucked in their bras. We want to get those out, you know, um, get them away. I read something that any intra upper quadrant inner cancer is directly uh, highly associated with cell phones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most are in the outer quadrant. Outer quadrant, yeah, it was something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so how can we control our homes? What can we do now that you have all of this information? So the major majority of the radiation we are exposed to does not come from outside the home, but a lot of it comes from inside our walls. So some people who are very sensitive may choose to completely hardwire our houses. Electromagnetic radiation, things that are coming off our electric electrical devices, and things like our computers that have, I don't know what have to do. other okay. types of air energy. I'm Dr. Sally yeah. and this is my daughter, Dr. Terry. All right, we're just going to turn that off. All right, did I get it? Yes. Okay. Um, so, some people choose to hardwire their houses, have it all on, um, you know, all of the wiring to get that Wi Fi out of it. A lot of us probably don't want to do that. Um, but what can we do with this Wi-Fi? We can shut our Wi-Fi down at night or turn it off whenever you're not using it. We don't generally use our computers and Wi-Fi at night, so turn that whole system off. Get rid of your microwave ovens. Um, when you turn your microwave oven on, it will expose you to very dangerous microwave radiation at levels far more excessive than your cell phone even. Replace with a steam convection oven, um, which will heat your food just as quickly, but is far safer, as Dr. Byron mentioned. And um, learn to use alternative methods to eat, heat your food. Um, use your stove top. You know, start planning ahead. It's going to take a little bit of extra time, but you know, if we plan, we can kind of um, live differently without these devices. Cell phones. When using your cell phone, use it on a speaker. Hold it away from your body. Um, when not in use, make sure your cell phone is on airplane mode. Keep cell phones off your body as much as possible. Bags, purses, putting it on the desk when you're not working on it. Don't just leave it in your pocket all day. Um, keep it away from you while you're driving. Okay? When cell phones are not in use, it, oh, when cell phones are not in use, this does not mean that the radiation is reduced to a safer range. So even though you're not using it, it still has that effect. Keep your cell phones on airplane mode when not in use. I said that. Um, Wi-Fi. Turn your Wi-Fi off at night. Use your laptop on a desk rather than on your lap. Okay? We don't want it touching our bodies. The further away from our bodies we get it, the safer it is. Faraday cage. Has anyone heard of a Faraday cage? Okay. So these are copper and silver threaded fabric. You can actually put them um, around your bed or even on the floor of your bed. If you live in a condo and you know there's a lot of Wi-Fi underneath you, it kind of creates this barrier um, and protects you from EMF. Um, it may improve your sleep quality as EMFs are known to disrupt sleep. Um, Faraday cage, F-A-R-A-D-A-Y cage, yeah. Diodes, do you want to hand me? Have, have you guys ever heard of diodes? Yeah? D-I-O-D-E-S. So, um, a lot of computers have them, right? Because they're, they're the, they are kind of like a cap to the funnel, or to the, they kind of prevent, how can I say this? I'm really bad at saying this part prevent everything from shooting out, okay? So they're gonna kinda keep it contained and shoot it back in and keep it in a, a line, if you wanna think of it. Is that a good way of saying it? So there's these things called diodes. Oops, grab my cell phone too. They're little discs. There's different ones. You can get cell phone cases um, that have them in them, but these are just little stickers. You can put them on any device and it helps block that EMF um, exposure. So um, doesn't they're pretty small, they're little stickers, they can really just go on anything. Um, like laptops, doesn't matter. My cell phone has it, our, our computer here has one. I've seen them online and I thought about buying them, I don't know if So you can take them. It reduces that your it reduces your effect of EMF. It reduces that device's exposure of EMF. Well, you say it redirects. 
directs it, like directs it, it away it, from it, it, it neutralizes. It neutralizes. And that's what I think it neutralizes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I'm like trying to find the word. Yeah. Yeah. Neut neutralizes the EMF signal. Okay. So it basically grabs, think of it as a magnet for the non native EMF, pulls it in and directs it into the diode. I knew he'd explain that better than me. Um, so again, these are nice. We are selling these tonight. Um, these lectures are free for, uh, for the community, and we want to keep them going. They do cost us time and money, though, so all of the proceeds that we get in this is going to go to keep these lectures going. So um, if you're interested, we have a few packages. We'll sell them individually, or if you want the whole package, we'll sell them as well. Um, but these are available if you want to go home and start your journey to health today. Yes, yep. every, any, any, Anything, any device. Any device. Microwaves. Including microwaves, still on. Including microwaves, yep. correct. Including microwaves, correct. Because I'm not microwaves. So some nutrition, I don't know how long am I going to talk here. Some nutrition, um, things we can do uh, re to reduce this oxidative stress. When the body is young and healthy, it's able to take care of that balance between cellular damage and rejuvenation and repair. Um, but as we get older, more stress, more toxins, it doesn't work as well. So um, activating the NRF2. You guys NRF2. NRF2, um, that's a biologic hormetic and upregulates that superoxide and free and reduces your free radicals. So it's going to help neutralize that nitric oxide and superoxide um, ex exposure. When this NRF2 or NRF2. NRF2. NRF2 is activated in the nucleus, it turns on the production of your antioxidant. We said we want antioxidant enzymes such as catalase. Glutathione, have you guys heard that word? Glutathione, strong, strong, strong antioxidant and superoxide dismutase. These antioxidant enzymes are powerful enough to neutralize up to one million free radicals per second every second. So these are strong, strong antioxidants and they're what's going to clean up your body from the constant exposure that we are exposed to with EMFs. And this is a far more effective approach than combating uh, any aging and disease issues too. We want to look at into turning these on. You can activate this NRF2 or NRF2 by eating more cruciferous vegetables, eating more garlic, consuming more omega-3s, DHA, EPA, high intensity exercises turns this on, as well as calorie restrictions such as intermittent fasting if you've heard of that before. Um, so which a lot of these, we talked about magnesium, we talked about omegas, we talked about eating foods of the earth. I mean that's a common denominator in all our lectures. When we talk about health, a lot of the stuff you do to protect yourself against EMF is going to protect yourself from many other issues as well. So it's not like you're like, oh, I just want to protect myself with this. You get a, an abundance of health benefits by doing a lot of these, um, eating this way and taking these supplements um, that we recommend. And again, magnesium, we talked, is a natural calcium channel blocker. So optimizing your magnesium channels is going to reduce that large influx of calcium into your cells. So. That is what I have for you today. So thanks for listening. And Dr. Sally is going to conclude a little bit. All right, I'm going to do a little more of the doom and gloom of EMF, but then we're going to uh, we're going to talk about some some real things that you can take home tonight as well. I'll elaborate on that. So some other reasons to be concerned about um, EMF: children born to women with high exposure to EMF during pregnancy are more than twice likely to have asthma. So we seeing an increase in asthma and respiratory issues in kids, absolutely. EMFs cause suppressed immunity. Half of this city, half of the country is sick right now. We have these superbugs going around. We get sick, sicker, faster, and it takes longer to get better when we have a lot of exposure to EMF. Dr. Tara talked about sperm that lose their motility or their ability to swim faster, and if they make it, to where they want to be, they have DNA damage. So they're not, they're not going to function. Um, Long-term exposure to EMF has already been linked to Alzheimer's disease and dementia. I have a passion for children. Dr. Byron talked about that a little bit. Children are obviously more severely affected because their skulls are thinner, but also because they are dividing cells at a much faster rate than we are. Um, a two-minute call on a cell phone can alter brain function in a child for an hour. Other countries do not allow the sale of cell phones to, kid, to people
people under 18 or they strongly it discourage that. What do we do in this country? We, because there's this link, there are now Barbie cell phones for little kids. We're seeing younger and younger kids use cell phone. The advertising campaign right now, if you watch, you're gonna see it shift because we all have cell phones. What population doesn't? The younger kids. So you're gonna see more advertising in that, which just breaks my heart. Um, all living cells, therefore all living beings, um, we're reliant on bioelectricity for cellular activity. We're very sensitive to, as Dr. Byron said, small EMF exposures. Those are normal to us. We consider them just like a heartbeat. We're, we're used to them. The problem is that man-made electromagnetic exposures are not normal. They have different intensities. They have different waveforms. They don't exist in nature. Therefore, our bodies don't recognize them as anything normal. Just like GMO foods we talk about, how they misdirect cellular activity, the same thing is happening with cell phones. Wildlife are known to leave an area where there's a cell phone tower. Smart. They don't think, oh, I need that. I need, need my cell phone. They think, this is toxic to me, therefore I am going to leave. All of these changes that have happened, technology in such a short period of time, makes it so that our ability to adapt to that, it's too much change in too short of time, and our bodies can't adapt. What is ignored today is the cumulative effect of all of these exposures. Talking on a cell phone for one hour a day for 10 years, which we've never studied this out, just like with cigarettes, they never studied it 20 years out, which is why they never saw it as a danger. Talking on a cell phone an hour a day for 10 years gives you 10,000 watts of radiation, which is 10 times more radiation than if you put your head in a running microwave. Mm. All right. Studies are beginning to demonstrate the cumulative effects of exposure to pregnant women. We're seeing more ADD, ADHD, aggressive activity, more emotional issues, um, in kids that are born to moms that use a cell phone during pregnancy. I'll take that out a little bit more. We see a lot of babies in our office, newborn babies coming home from the hospital already on a prescription medication for reflux. So why would newborns be born with reflux? That reflux wasn't even a thing 50 years ago. I see more and more ultrasounds being done on pregnant women. When my daughter was, I didn't have any ultrasounds with my first two children. I think I had one with my son who's gonna be 23, 22, 22, <laughs> um, this month. Um, I typically see pregnant women getting two to three ultrasounds of pregnancy. And for the reason, we want to predict your due date. Who cares the exact date? the damage that's done, and there have been no studies that show what an ultrasound sending in that uh, frequency into a fetus that, whose cells are dividing at a monumental rate. What are we doing to our children? When we see these mass shootings, I think, is that person's brain fried that can go into an elementary school and shoot children and teachers? Something's not right there. Um, EMF fields have been implicated in the recent massive disappearance of honeybee colonies in this country. This is huge because honeybees are essential for pollinating over a thousand commercial crops. Way back in the day of Albert Einstein, he said, if the bee disappeared off the surface of the globe, then man would have only four years left of life. Is this important? Yes. Dr. Tara brought her honeybees onto my property last summer and put them on the border of my property against, with, there's all this clover in the field, thinking it was great. The bee inside them, angry. The, they're, they're angry. angry, they couldn't get, a, they wouldn't accept a queen bee and I just said to her when I read this, there is a huge um, electric box for that whole area right there that you can almost hear. 
we will not have the bees there again. It was awful. To, it was sad to see what happened to those bees. And that's just in one season. They, they, they were gone. Newest dangers, something called a smart meter that is a, uh, allows for the wireless transmission of utility data. Now if the electric company can have a smart meter that measures all the devices you use in your home, they can better know what to charge you. Um, they are testing these out in some areas and already the complaints of people that live in those areas are sleep deprivation, mood swings, and headaches. So look for these things and if there's a way to say no we don't want them there's power in numbers education like this makes us more aware of what's happening in the world and then we can act on it so what can you do tonight what room in your house do you spend the most time in you better all say the bedroom <laughs> <laughs> not the kitchen right we sleep hopefully six to eight hours a night you're generally not in the same room for six to eight hours at a time so bedroom is an important place to go look around and see what's going on. Um, a clock radio alarm clock puts off aberrant energy. If we have that right next to our head so that we can reach up and hit snooze, not a good thing. Move it across the room. If you have to get up to turn it off, you're awake, it's all good, right? Uh, how many of you use an electric blanket or electric heating pad? So that's something you might want to think about because that's, I tell people, if you want to, turn it on, get your bed nice and warm, but then unplug it. Don't just turn it off, unplug it from the wall, and don't use it while you're laying in there. <laughs> so you wanna look for, for other sources. There are, there's electricity in our walls. You can actually go to the hardware store, buy a <coughs> volt sensor meter. You can take it home and you can run it along your wall. When that meter goes up, there is aberrant electricity coming out of that wall. If that is on the wall that your headboard is on and your head is gonna be there, you're gonna to wanna to switch, turn around and put your head at the footboard because uh, you don't want your head right up against that. Um, you know, at least expensive if there's a lot of electricity, we don't wanna rewire our house, you can turn the circuit breaker off at night if you're not gonna be using the lights anyway for that area of your home. Have a flashlight next to your bed if you need to get up, you can do that. And again, people that have health issues, brain issues, heart issues, nervous system issues, should for sure do these things. The rest of us that say, oh, we're feeling pretty good, be aware of it. But these symptoms from this are so insidious, they come on so gradually, you never relate them mm -hmm. to cell phone. Yeah. You know, and you go to the doctor and say, I'm having headaches, I can't sleep, what's wrong? Oh, well, you're depressed. Let's put you on an antidepressant. It's going to be something else. Um, so la when you use your computer, if you have a laptop, when you use it, don't have it plugged in. When you plug that in, you get 100 times more frequency hitting your body. So don't have it plugged in while you're using it. That's pretty simple. Same thing with a Kindle or an iPad or your cell phone. Um, Tara talked about where do we put a, a laptop right here, and I've always told my patients, especially my high school patients, don't do that. We don't want that energy going into our reproductive organs. And I always say, it's terrible posture chiropractically, because you're like this. You're flexed, you're like this, and you're typing. Awful. We don't want to do it. So uh, try and change that posture. Um, so food for thought. People that you know, pregnant women that you know, say you might want to think twice about having three ultrasounds during your pregnancy. Sharing this information with people is the way that we are going to win this war. Um, do you think there should be a legal age for cell phones? I think there should because we're not going to see a change unless there is. Um, so that's something. All disease begins with cellular imbalance and that's exactly what we're talking about this cellular imbalance. Um, so think about health, think about healing, whatever it is that you do that is good for you. If you do essential oils, research that. My research said rosemary, lavender, bergamot, and Roman chamomile are really good for helping with free radicals and for helping with um, some of that aberrant energy. Do things to restore health to your mitochondria like Dr. Tara talked about, powerhouse of the cell. Um, there are 
many supplements that can help drive good, healthy mitochondria. So talk to someone about that and support your brain. Uh, getting good, good sleep at night, taking care of your, um, your brain by taking omega-3s, EPA, DHA, vitamin D. We're never gonna have a lecture where we don't say vitamin D, so there it is, folks, vitamin D. Um, can be very helpful. So control the things that you can control. Make your home your haven. I say that all the time, but that is the one place that you can go to and have protection. We can't do that out there. So fix it in your house. All right. Any questions? Um, you mentioned about the ultrasound during yeah. pregnancy. Yeah. I never thought about that during my pregnancy, and I had several. Mm -hmm. um, any any suggestions? I mean, she's fabulous, but you know, like, what can we do? Well, now, what, or yeah, is there, is there anything that we should be? I would definitely, I would definitely be uh, giving. You know, I mean, just the basic things that create health in a child, like a probiotic and, and a good fish oil that feed the brain, and then and then monitor and watch watch her um, the the way the way we raise our kids and the environment we raise them in can promote hyperactivity or promote calmness so do more of that promoting calmness but I would basically say you know just watch her if, if, if you have a concern about that think about other toxins like vaccines and other <coughs> things that are going to further compromise that whole nervous system so those might be things that you you research and think well I'm not going to do all of those I know you and your family, yeah. and you're doing a lot. Yeah, I was gonna say you're eating that. cleanly. Yeah. You're getting her regularly adjusted. You know what I mean? You're doing a lot to yeah. be proactive on her health, and that is gonna really Make help. Up for that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we, we talk about getting adjusted because we're yeah. chiropractors, but when we say the nervous system, yeah. chiropractic specifically affects the nervous system. Yeah. So making sure your nervous system is functioning is huge. Is huge. <laughs> The, uh, the other piece, too, that everyone can do is to check the location of your wireless router. If you have wireless at home, where is that located? So Dr. Sally talked about looking for other electrical uh, appliances near the bedroom, et cetera. But I, I often get patients, you know, for example, autistic kids and parents say, okay, what can we do? The first thing we do is where is the router located? Where does the child sleep? Is the router located next to the head of the bed in the next room? Oh, the child says, no, it's in the other room. Well, where is it in the other room? Oh, it's right next to the head of the bed in the other room. Okay, or this below. one or below, and it's 24 7, you know. So, uh, one action step that's very easy is to uh, check the location, change the location, and at the very least, turn it off in the evening, turn it off at bedtime. <clears throat> also, one of the other things that hasn't been mentioned is Ethernet, using Ethernet cable. Well, actually, it was mentioned several times, but I'll, I guess I want to emphasize the use of Ethernet cables. Um, in, in my house, unfortunately, we have about half of our house wired, and the other half, because when we moved in our house, Wi-Fi was just coming of, it was just kind of the, the end thing. So uh, I said, oh, no, I'm not going to get it, you know, get the cabling into my office at home. What a mistake, you know. So, um, you know, try to, try to use Ethernet cables when you have them available. You know, another electrical device that varies greatly in my research is, but can put off a lot of EMF is a hair dryer. Yes. And where do we use that? Mm -hmm. Right yeah. by our head. And, um, you know, so, I mean, you, a Gauss meter will, will measure some of that, but it would be interesting because there's a huge variation between hair dryers. Some of them are okay and some of them have a lot. So um, things that you do that are around your head, you want to limit your exposure to. What about those Himalayan salt baths? Beautiful. The salt baths. Mm -hmm. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, that's a great, a great thing to do. But are there salons that are worse than others as far as doing that? Yeah, there are there are some phones that are worse, but you know you, you ultimately have to do that research. Unfortunately, I don't know which phones are, are better or worse. At the end of the day, uh, the, the most important thing is to make sure that you're minimizing your exposure. That's the number one thing to do, irrespective of how powerful that phone is or, or whether it's highly rated or not. If you're using a lot, it doesn't matter. So minimize exposure. That's the that's the number one take home message for this evening.
Control what you can control. Yes. I want to say another thing about baby monitors. I, I mentioned baby monitors earlier, and we have lots of moms here, et cetera. So one of the things, you, you can potentially find baby monitors with an Ethernet cable if you have access to an Ethernet cable in the baby's room. So that's another thing to think about as well, baby monitors with Ethernet extensions. They do exist. Do you happen to know how much of the diode will, um, how much of the EMF the diode will sequester? That's a good question. It, it's quite a bit. It's upwards of 90%. So you're going you're gonna to get a fair amount of sequestration of... Conceptually, if you put on airplane mode, uh, does it completely cancel EMFs? It does quite a bit, yes. And if you have a diode on it as well... That's, exact, that's exactly what I do. My phone is on airplane mode now. Okay. Um, and I, I do that purposefully. For example, when I'm walking from my car to the office or walking from the car to here, I put it on airplane mode. When I don't want that phone actively anywhere near my body. And I'm going to miss some calls, but that's what I, I, I feel like my health is more important than missing a call. There's email, there's texting, et cetera. So. What if it's off? That doesn't do anything. It has to be airplane it, has, mode? it must be on airplane mode. Phone is still active if it's, if it's off. You're still, you're still connecting to a tower. I see. Yeah, as long as it's okay. connecting to a tower, then you're getting exposed. Okay. And you know, modern technology, we, we can all anticipate towers are going to get bigger ranges because we want to have service on the top of a mountain, you know. So this is only going to increase our exposure. When I, when I lived in Chicago, there's a, a, in, in training, uh, residency training, we, uh, my program trained at a high school. So we were trained in part to work in a high school medical clinic, which is an interesting concept. So I was recently in Chicago, and we like to go to a, a, a restaurant near that high school, my family and I. So we drove by the high school kind of nostalgic wise, and I saw on this high school at least 12 cell phone towers right on top of oh the high God. school. I was flabbergasted. High school's making money. Yeah, right I, was, oh. I was disturbed. I said, oh my gosh, look at this. I took a picture and everything. I mean, I couldn't believe it. 12 cell phone towers on this high school. So, you know, that you, and you think, oh, this is no problem. This is great. No, it's a, it's a huge mistake frying the brains of these students. So. I, I'm going to give you a little personal. This was probably a dozen years ago before <coughs> I knew anything about this. At my other office, I had a, a wrist issue, which for a chiropractor is really scary, and it was getting worse, and I was doing everything. It wasn't going away. I was seeing the massage therapist at that office, my fascial uh, worker, who um, at the time was very interested in this electric arena and was actually taking a course that electricians took because she was so passionate about this and she had been I'd spent a thousand dollars her working this and everything and she finally she's like Sally this should be better by now something else is going on and she had a meter a voltage meter and she went upstairs to my treatment room and she ran it along the table and we chiropractors like wear out the carpet because we stand in the same spot all the time, the same side of the table. And when she got right to where I stood, it, it showed, it went up and she's like, something's not grounded, something's wrong with that table. And every time you work on someone, it's hitting you, hitting you in that wrist. So called someone out, they came and she was right. There was a wire that was shooting stuff out. They fixed that and I got a lot better. That person, that uh, person I'm talking about, my fascia worker, was instrumental. They wanted to put cell phones in the, or towers in the Racine Zoo. The Racine Zoo was going to get $200 a month, and blah, blah, blah. And she canvassed the neighborhood and said, our babies and our animals are ones that can't do anything about it. That's who we're going to target. They don't have the power in the zoo right now. So power. We have the power, people. If this, uh, this, really, this is not some aloof discussion. This is real. I see this every single day. There's a test that many of my patients did. It's called a cyber scan. And that test actually measures the toxicity from the electromagnetic frequency. And it's so sensitive, it will tell you which cell phone company is, a, is adversely affecting you. For example, it'll say AT&T, yes, and it'll give the frequency, say that that's a problem for you, for this, for patient X, Y, or Z. So it, I see this multiple times a day, every day. 
So, it, it, and I, I'm just suggesting that to you because it's that's a bona fide test. But above and beyond the test, anecdotal stories. This is this is very very real, and it's something that's very much under the radar. Um, but you know, as you become more educated about it, uh, hopefully you will share share this story as well and begin to take some significant action steps. I am. Oh, and by the way, sleep. I want to say something about sleep, and then we'll get get to your comments. Uh, sleep, specifically, the way that the EMFs affect sleep is that the EMFs oscillate the pineal gland. So our pineal gland is a gland that sits in the center of the brain that produces melatonin at night, serotonin during the daytime. And as you know, melatonin is extremely important for us to have high quality sleep, that is the, the ability to have all four stages of sleep, specifically deep sleep. And EMFs oscillate the pineal gland and disrupt the ability to produce melatonin. That's why it was Dr. Sally, I believe, who mentioned earlier that sleep is often disrupted and it's the real deal. So at the very least, when you get someone who is an insomniac, can't sleep, et cetera, the first thing you do is to begin to mitigate the Wi-Fi. Say, okay, we gotta, we gotta you know, turn off the Wi-Fi at night, get away from it, et cetera. Yes, now. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I, what I would do is I would I would get I would look very carefully at getting uh, some additional devices to try to try to minimize the exposure. So devices. When I'm referring to devices, I'm referring to diode type devices. So there are also these cards you can buy. There, there are cards that are very similar to diodes. Uh, these cards that 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 give out scalar waves. S C A L A R. And these wave these these cards you can put right under your pillow and they will block the EMF as well as, for example, a diode will. So you can just go under, under EMF blockers. Uh, and a couple of companies that are good for these would be uh, Quantum Shield, which is the company that Dr. Tara mentioned, that whereby we're, we're selling some of their uh, products in terms of EMF blockers. And the other company that, that sells a lot of these products is Defense Shield. So if you go to defenseshield.com and or quantumshield.com, you'll, you'll get access to a bunch of these type devices. And by the way, smart meters, they produce, remember we said the Wi-Fi and microwaves produce 2.4 gigahertz and 2.3 gigahertz respectively for microwaves. Smart meters, 1.9 gigahertz. So it's close to the same. So having, having, you have to do something to mitigate that for sure. And typically, typically the companies are usually good about removing them, but you usually have to pay a fee. So some people, you know, their, their fee is X number of dollars a month, you know, maybe it's 30 or 40 bucks a month to get them to come out to remove it. So look into that. Unfortunately, that's pure extortion. You know, it's what it is. It's ridiculous. But it, it, unfortunately, it's something that you really want to consider if they have that available, available, and they should. Most of those companies, uh, electric companies, have them have that available now. Uh, so look at that, you might have to pay a fee though. Go ahead in the back. So, Fitbits, are they all? <laughs> so, Fitbits. when my son's sleeping with it, he wakes up in the morning and says, I've gotten X number of hours of deep sleep and everything. He's See, actually interrupting See that, sleep by... That's a, that's a, that means you've been paying attention. Because, <laughs> again, any of these devices that are, that are in communication, they're putting out Wi-Fi or using these RF signals, it, big mistake. It's frying. And it's how do we sleep? You right. know that that is right next yeah. to the nope. Fitbit. Nope. I mean, all these iPhone watches right. now and stuff like Stay it's away. constantly on your body. Yep. Stay you know? away. So. Stay away. Yeah. What, what? Remember what they're doing is if you, when you have a cell phone in your hand and you're using it a lot. What happens to that cell phone? And especially if you're driving, warm. it gets warm. It yeah. gets hot. That's now your body has to respond to that as a toxin, just like the mechanism we discussed. So what will happen is, guess what's gonna happen? We said calcium is one of the main drivers here, right? So calcium has to get into that cell. Calcium is actually, the reason calcium is rushing into the cell is calcium is a, one of the major detoxifiers in the body. 
So calcium is coming in as a benefit, although too much of that calcium is bad. But where's the calcium coming from? Bones. So what is the person at risk for? Osteoporosis. That's not whether it's going to happen, it's when. And all we're doing, as Dr. Sally and Dr. Tara mentioned, is pressing on the accelerator. It's going to happen much sooner. And that's just one of the degenerative diseases, right? Ultimately, it leads to many others. Stay far away from those devices. They are, yep, they're helpful. Again, you have to, you got to get in the game and do something. So they are, they are very helpful, yep. Because, you know, again, we can't, you can't say, okay, I'm going to go, you know, laptop free, right? I mean, you can do the best you can, but we all have a budget, right? We have jobs, we have to live. We live in this world. Right, right. So we have to do things to mitigate it. And eventually, they will produce technology to produce frequencies that cancel out the Wi-Fi signals, cancel out the damaging aspects of the Wi-Fi signals. That, that technology exists, it just hasn't been implemented yet. That's in part why we wear, I saw someone today wearing uh, Bose noise, oh, it was Pastor. Pastor was yeah. wearing noise-canceling headphones, right? It's the same type of technology. You can put in the anti-frequency to block the, the deleterious effects of the Wi-Fi. It's very simple to do. No one has really done it yet, but whoever does it is going to make billions because we need it. And it's just a matter of time, but who's gonna who's gonna push for that? The people in this room and others who are in the know. So, you know, it, it's gonna happen. So we, you know, what you have to do is buy your time to make sure you're protecting you and your family and friends in the meantime. Yeah, and I didn't talk about grounding. Is that related, like, yep. Abs absolutely. Yep, yep, so you know, doctor's orders, weather permitting, go to Lake Michigan, take your shoes off, walk, walk. I used to, in between classes at, in chiropractic school, I would go out in, in to the grassy area, and I had a 10 minute break, and I would take my shoes off and just go walk, yeah. and like kind of rejuvenate Beautiful. between classes to keep learning, because I was in class like 10 hours a day, but. The way you can think about grounding in this scenario is relatively simple. Okay, and the benefits from, from a beneficial perspective. The earth, we're talking about grounding, the earth has one big negative charge. Okay, think of a big negative charge. And that's good for us. We need that negative charge. Negative charge is energizing, it's healing. And the earth is one big negative charge. The positive <laughs> charges are these toxins. Okay, so we need to discharge the positive Wi Fi toxins, positive EMF toxins. They need to be discharged you know, through the body and out into the earth. So that's why grounding is important. So grounding is part of the process of detoxifying. When you're standing on that earth, you're gonna get the positive negative, I should say positive negative. Yeah. You're, you're, gonna get, you're gonna get the beneficial. the beneficial energizing ions from the earth gonna come up through you and you're gonna discharge the bad ones that are gonna go into the earth. And it's free. Yeah. My, How about that? My clinician yeah. in, chiro in chiropractic school grounded his bed yeah. to the earth. So he was sleeping on a grounded mm -hmm. surface. So is there like other ways to increase that? I mean, is there any natural mm -hmm. There, are, there are grounding pads and that kind of thing. And I, I'm not an expert in those, yeah, but you got you you should do the research to make sure if you purchase a grounding pad that you are purchasing one that's good, <laughs> because there are some that are not so good. So do do some good homework on that. But yes, you can purchase some grounding pads to supplement what we what we, living in the northern hemisphere. We just can't go out barefoot. You know, unless you're very brave. <laughs> what about salt lamps? Yeah, someone asked about salt lamps earlier. And <laughs> salt, salt lamps, uh, you guys, salt lamps yeah, were good. Yeah. Uh, salt lamps are very good. Remember, salt is, is, has a cleansing effect. Uh, it's not going to necessarily block Wi-Fi, though, uh, but, it, it, yeah. but it's going to allow you to, it's going to assist your body in detoxing. Mm -hmm. Re remember, remember why, though? Remember why? Because salt... Is 70% of our body is seawater, right? Mm -hmm. What is this Wi-Fi doing? It's oscillating the water in our body. So we need protection from salt, right? So salt has a cleansing, has a cleansing ability once it, you know, once we either inhale those <coughs> salt ions or we uh, ingest them. So I just wanted to ask about satellite radio. Is that 
Uh, satellite, good question. Um, satellite, so satellite radio, this is an interesting, interesting question. I don't know the exact answer, so I, I guess I can respond. Yeah, go right. Okay. Right. okay, so. All these things we haven't thought Right, okay, so here's, here's the deal. Let's go back to our <coughs> beginning discussion. Remember we said this whole discussion centers around the light spectrum, okay? Light spectrum. So we said within the light spectrum, we have gamma rays on one end, x-rays, this is called ionizing radiation. That's radiation that jacks our bodies up, breaks up atoms in the body, causes DNA damage if we're overly exposed. But we're always exposed to them because they're naturally a part of the universe. But we don't want too much. Gamma ray, X-ray, and now we live, I shouldn't say we live, we live in this whole spectrum, but we see in this tiny little part of the spectrum called the visible light spectrum, okay? This is high energy, super high energy. Gamma ray, X-ray, then we got visible light spectrum here, and now we have microwaves over here. This is cell phone technology, microwaves, da 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 da. Next, radio waves. Okay, so radio waves. This energy on this side of the spectrum is very low, so it doesn't have. We listen to AM and FM radio, right? We listen to AM and FM radio all the time. Doesn't affect us. So. Thing. AM and FM radio doesn't affect us. So we're good we're, when we're deal, dealing with the radio. Satellite radio, I'm going to assume, is dealing with some form of EMF, and I, 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 don't, I don't really know that with 100% certainty. So, you know, I, I, you, the problem is a lot of those monitors are right, in, right near our head in the car, you know. So we want to be somewhat careful about that. You know, in fact, there was a person that Dr. Sally was mentioning who clued me into that because she, that person, the massage therapist that she was referring to shared a story with me about someone who was adversely affected with headaches that she was treating, and, and she ended up doing a, uh, an, an analysis of that person's car and discovered that the, all, the, all the Wi-Fi stuff was centered in that person's vehicle right in there, right near their head. So, it, it, so I, I think, I, I don't know specifically about satellite, but I can at least say that you, I, I would be very careful about it especially where it is, I'll, I'll try to limit that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But I just had just to clarify the balance of the volt, volt meter. Mm -hmm. um, how do you spell that? D-O-L-T, volt. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Another term that's used for that is a tri-meter, T-R-I meter, tri-meter. Mm -hmm. And am I right that I'm correctly, the wires, the electric wires that run behind the walls are mm -hmm. yep. They are the precursor to good antioxidants in our body. They're what turn the antioxidants on. You don't, you don't take a supplement of nerves, though. No. Yeah. No, it's inside the body. Yeah. So what are essential oils? Rosemary? Rosemary, bergamot, okay. and Roman chamomile. You know, um, too, if you... I'm not an expert on, lavender was the other one, on essential oils, but seeing someone who's done a lot of research, we have a gal in our office who actually can read, read, she gives you something and your body kind of talks and says what oils it needs. I would think if you were having a lot of exposure, that would tell, say, I need rosemary, it would come up as that, so, yeah. And those are things that are only gonna help, never gonna hurt, so, that, those are no-brainers. Were there any earbuds uh, instead of, I don't usually talk on the phone, I just use the ear, the earbuds. Any good that's such a good question. You yeah. guys have been paying close attention. Mm -hmm. um, this, that's actually, you know, it's interesting. I, I wouldn't have thought that it's an issue, but it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, really? it is. If you, if you, like, if, you, if, you if you, now mm -hmm. you're talking to folks who are in the know. Mm -hmm. Now there are people who are higher than us who are really in the know mm -hmm. and they don't use earbuds. They well, no, or they're, they're, or they're Bluetooth, like an actual worse thing. Yeah, yeah because, I think Bluetooth. Right, right. But ear, earbuds increase. Remember, it's an electrical signal that's allowing that to get there. So, so the people in the know, if, if you if you become obsessive compulsive about this, develop a little OCD about EMF, um, then you wouldn't wear earbuds. I, again, I think we live. You know, I, I in my household, uh, I wake up super early in the morning. 
And I listen to a lot of things on, with my iPod or iPad, not iPad, I, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. iPod, listen yeah. to a lot of things with my iPod. Uh, and because I don't want a loud speaker with everyone else sleep, I use headphones. Um, but I do my best to mitigate that as much as possible by taking a bunch of supplements to, uh, that, that function as antioxidants for the brain. So I spend an hour in the morning, you know, with headphones on, um, and there, you know, there are pluses and minuses to that. If you spend a lot of time on the, on the, you know, using your phone or using your <coughs> headphones, you might want to say, well, let me, can you cut that back, and or look for headphones. And you would have to do the research on this. Look for headphones that minimize the EMF effect. Uh, another question, uh, maybe you don't have an answer, but. So we've changed from analog signals to digital and TV. So are right. we being affected differently? Absolutely, today? yes. As a matter of fact, I didn't talk about this. I kind of skipped it because I didn't want to put you to sleep. But uh, the move from 4G, for example, 4G to 5G, super duper problematic. So remember we used the analogy of analog being a constant signal. It's a constant wave, constant signal. That's your, your pole applying a force to the concrete floor, and the concrete floor doesn't break, because the pole is just static, but, and it's constant. But it's a heavy load, but the floor is like, cool, I got this, right? Now, all of a sudden, with digital 2G, 3G, right, it's a pulsed jackhammer effect. Now the floor is gonna break, okay? With 5G and or increased digital signal, now you add three or four of those jackhammers, mm -hmm. and you add more power. So not only is it a little force, it's a big force jackhammer with two or three more big force jackhammers. Mm -hmm. That's why, the reason, they, the reason they're doing that is because one of the things about these waves, remember we just said something about radio waves, right? You asked a question, you said, well, what about radio waves? Or, or actually, you asked about satellites. And, well, let's use radio waves as an example. The light spectrum, the light spectrum in and of itself, this is how you kind of conceptualize this. The light spectrum is a wave, okay? And it's a carrier. You can, you can surf on this wave. So it's a carrier. So it carries information. You can put information on there. You put radio information on there. That's how we listen to the radio. You can put uh, healing information into a wave. I have devices in my office whereby I use light therapy to transmit healing floral essences, essential oils, etc. We do the same thing with other forms, other forms of waves. So the more of these waves we have available, the more information can be carried. So that's why they're doing that. The problem is that it's biologically damaging because our bodies are not, cannot respond to that artificial form of a wave. So again, just on this digital TV affects us differently. It's digital TV affects us differently. That's exactly right. In fact, in fact. The LCD screens, for example, you know, Foxconn's coming, right? So what do they what do they produce? These LCD screens. So these LCD screens can be very problematic because, for example, in my house, uh, 10 years ago, 11, 12, whenever we moved in, this time is flying, I'm getting old. So we, we, we purchased a plasma TV, right? That was the latest, greatest thing. Well, plasma TVs emit massive amounts of EMF. So in my house, I cover it. We don't use it. It's cut still there, but we rarely use it. We use it maybe on holidays. So uh, these, these, these screens you have to be careful about. So it's one of those things, again, you don't necessarily have to develop obsessive compulsive disorder about it. You have, to be, you have to be knowledgeable that these things exist because otherwise you'll go to the doctor and say, Dr. Byron, I'm so tired. Why am I so fatigued? Well, you constantly get one of the reasons you may be constantly getting hit by EMFs, and you know. So you want to do your best to try to mitigate that, try to minimize it. And Those of us that are our parents too, if we change some of these things in our home, not only are we helping our children, but we're teaching them the importance of this too. Well, we don't watch TV all day, and this is why it's harmful to your brain. You know, to teach them that, so we change that behavior of that, and it's not like. You know, can never watch TV, but certainly we know we need to limit those things. You know, we need to pay attention to that. A little personal anecdote: um, when I was in, when I was a resident, and then on into working as a traditional doctor for about 12 years, we carried pagers, right? And the regular doctors still carry pagers, right? And 
I, I, I noticed something after carrying this pager for several years. I started getting getting phantom pages. I wouldn't have the pager on me, but I would feel the little buzz in my head. You know, and it was like, what is going on here? And you know, part of that is again your body and your nervous system getting trained and develops a resonance to these devices and these EMFs. And again, your body, you basically fry in the tissue. And so you wanna you wanna really do your best to begin to uh, you know take some action steps. And some of these are baby steps, simply turning off the Wi-Fi, using wired products. The first step would be everybody has a cell phone, so you absolutely should have some kind of diode on it, at least to neutralize that while you while you're using it. Neutralize the EMF while you're using Those it. were in Christmas stockings at my house yeah. this year. Yeah. <laughs> the best gift I gave. Yeah. Can we wear those? Yeah, put them in your pocket. Put them in your pocket. Yeah. That's exactly right. And Some how people do you use that? when I learned about this a few years ago, the person who taught me about dials wore two and wore <laughs> one in each pocket. He had one in each pocket. And that's it. Whenever you're around him, you have you always have one in each pocket. It, it, it you know, not in, 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 in addition to what, what he had on the cell phone and the computers, etc. Can we use this for just on TV? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, any electronic device. They're easy, it's like they're what a 50 bucks, something like that. Does you know, it mess up the Wi Fi or do anything else? No. Like, no, not at all. My husband's like, you ruined it. No, no. All right. Well, thank you guys for venturing out tonight. Um, next month, we are going to take the hot seat in and ask the doctors um, class. So we're just going to sit up here, and you guys can ask us whatever questions you want. All right? So it's going to be the first <coughs> Thursday. Whatever health-related questions. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming. I have a, I have a question. 